The North Coast 500. Some people say it's the UK's best road trip. Others, like me, say it's not. So what do you do when something's broken? You fix it. And that's what we do in this video. We try and fix the North Coast 500. This is part one of a two-part series where we spend seven days on the NC500. In this episode, we cover the less dramatic side, the East, and well, some of the North as well. We're 37 minutes away from destination number one of the NC500. I can't believe you brought me on the NC500 after all I've heard about it. The ultimate Scottish road trip. The ultimate Scottish road trip. The ultimate Scottish, Scottish road, road trip. trip. We're starting it not just in a different place, but we're starting it with a plug. Been working on this for a while, you may have heard, but we've got the ultimate Scottish road trip paperback edition available now. The link is in the description below, but that's not why we're here. We're here because I've fixed the NC500. You're welcome, Scotland. I thought you didn't like it though. It's not that I don't like the NC500, I'm just not a fan of its reputation because so many people drive from everywhere to get the NC500 because they think that's where you see all of Scotland's most iconic views because of this mad reputation that it's got. And so many people will leave without seeing basically any of them. And to indicate what I mean, I need to show you this. So this is a map of Scotland. The orange line is the official North Coast 500 route. Now let's plot Scotland's top 20 most iconic views on it. Only one of them is on the NC500. And to be fair, the one that's on there, which is Apple Cross, shouldn't be, because it's a nice view, but it's there's better on the NC500. And with some minor tweaks, I can include so many more of Scotland's best views in this guidebook and without going miles out of the way. It's still the NC500, just better. We're in Aviemore. Well, look, more like in Glenmore, actually, uh, which is one of our favorite, it's probably my favorite lock. It's got a beach, most of them don't. And it's not like a sea lock, it's, it's a nice one in the Cairngorms. And it is definitely a must see. And as I'll show you, one of the biggest issues with the NC500 is you literally drive within 50 meters of Aviemore, but you just drive past it. You don't even get to see it if you're going to Inverness. So this is improvement number one, is to just start 100 meters off the road, off the A9 in Aviemore. Come and see this, because it's bloody beautiful. There'll be a little bit of a gap in the content because we went to the Pine Martin bar and got a little bit carried away with the food, hot wings, a must. You have to get them. They're always lush. We've had a few orders this afternoon while we've been driving, so we're going to nip up there while we've got signal, print out a few labels, package these orders up, and then go from there. So that is the orders done. A few more to get posted. We've got the better, more improved NC500 road trip guide, which isn't currently finished because I made it to get some photos, but it will be when this video comes out. So it's available now. The link for that is below. The road trip guide includes over 150 pages, over well over 200 different things to do from castles, beaches, tips of like what roads are a bit narrow if you've got a big vehicle, ways of shortening the trip, lengthening the trip, a better start point, a better end point, some suggestions for everything else in between. It's got everything that you need to plan, the perfect road trip, and not only that, it actually leads on to the ultimate Scottish road trip. So if you want to do the two of them together, which if you're up there, might as well do that. On top of that, you also get a free copy of the Isle of Harris road trip guide that I was going to release in paperback, but because of the overwhelming support and how many people bought the ultimate Scottish road trip one, I decided to just give it away free to anyone that's already ordered the ultimate Scottish road trip does order the Scottish road trip, orders the NC501, so you'll get an email with the download link for that if you order either of them. So we're gonna try and find a post box, get these posted, and try and find somewhere to sleep for the night so we can push on and show you more of the improved NC500 tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Hey, will that one be fine? What? We'll look at your picture. Was oh, this is the post box? Yeah, but it's gold. <laughs> It's cool. Isn't that when, don't you get a gold post box if someone has won something in the Olympics or something? I don't know, but it's his priority post box. I'll just still phone it. 
It'll be fine, won't it? We are. It's the ultimate road thing. trip deserves a gold post box. We should demand one where we live. There's a story behind that, I'm sure. I'm, is it something to do with if you win the Olympics? Or someone from there wins it? Or I don't really know. We'd spent a ton of time driving and running ourselves ragged on the first day, so after posting the orders, we turned the cameras off for the night and we pick up the story the next morning. So we're heading up the A9, we've left Aviemore about 10, 15 minutes ago. We've got an hour till we get to the next spot. Obviously, we're not showing off everywhere in this video because that's not the point in this video. I needed to get there to get a couple of photos that I was missing for the guide, but obviously in the guide, I will include everything about Aviemore and sort of between Aviemore and then Inverness, which is obviously the start of the official route. But we've got eight or nine different spots to hit today, so it's gonna be a busy day. I need photos for these. The weather is looking good, which is perfect. That's been the problem before. We've been up here a few times doing a bit of research and sort of figuring out the route and where we would take it, where we wouldn't take it and all the rest of it. But every other time, because of the weather in Scotland, some photos work well, other photos didn't and I want the photos to look pretty. First stop is a pink house that Danny reckons she's dressed to match I in am. a slightly off-white t-shirt. It's pale There's pink. no pink about you that. Get your glasses on There's a literally no pink about that. So one of the things that I'm trying to include in this guide is basically some information on driving roads like if you come down here in a long van you're gonna be in a little bit of trouble especially if you're not confident as well Ugh. see what I mean so it's just trying to make sure that there is enough information for everyone in there so that if you decide to come down and it's like this you know what you're getting into before you start because if you don't and you get halfway down you're in a massive long van getting back out can become almost impossible and i think to be honest just off this road the next one unless we can find another route where it isn't going to be i'm not even going to put it on the list i didn't want people to come down this kind of road to be honest look at look at that so you got like a single skinny gravelly track down a road that doesn't look particularly like I'm meant to be there and getting back out in this is fine but it's only six meters long if you've got to put a motorhome or a big counter van this will be a nightmare so I think that's that one potentially off the list as well and then back down to the next one which is another new addition I think as well so all a big learning curve as well for these new spots but that's the thing when we're not wanting to just rehash the same thing we're trying to find new places sometimes this happens and you waste quite a bit of time we're at the start of the walk up to Firish Monument point it is up here definitely definitely a must see glad we came up we've kind of seen it but not like actually been up to the top of it before so you can see it from down the bottom so I'm glad we made the effort not accessible for everyone but if you can get up it's worth it look at the view after we'd finished at the monument we popped to grab some photographs of the mermaid of the north and then approximately 30 minutes into the east coast section I started morning. Now the east coast of this road trip is a little bit underwhelming. I've came at it wanting to try and be a little bit more objective than I had been previously. And every time I do this, which is a few now, I come to the exact same conclusion, which is that there's not really now going on. And I think if you've driven all the way up from wherever, down south or something, and this is your first day on the NC500, you'd be underwhelmed, you just would. There's not really much on the East Coast, to be fair. It's not particularly good looking, there's not really going on. Luckily, it does get better, so you do need to hang on and sort of bear with it. But strangely, I am still recommending that you need to do it east, 
north west you have to go up the east side first because if you don't you've got this as like a bit of a sour taste in your mouth when you finish the road trip and instead a bit like a good film it starts you off slowly builds you up and then you go home buzzing because you've done you've seen the best part so this is the park up for the night we're in wick and we're in a car park it's a tenner a night it's the overnight we've got good phone signal it's got good reviews on park for night so this is hopefully where i'm going to catch up on all the sleep that i missed yesterday because i'm knackered a slight issue this morning because everything i've been recording hasn't got any audio because i hadn't pushed the audio cable in fully but we're at um well we're meant to be at castle st Clair. we're not yet and the road's being closed presumably the fixing some of the potholes and everything which is good but that means that we've got to park a couple of miles away and walk in otherwise we're going to get stuck there for a few hours while they're fixing the road before we can actually drive past which isn't any good i don't know how far it is i think it looks to be about two two and a half mile it's nowhere near this far normally there's a car park almost right next to it in the usual situation but this isn't it <laughs> This definitely wasn't all open. They've done like a lot of structural work by the looks of it just to make it a little bit safer, but I'm 99.9% .9 certain we got stuck on the bridge and you couldn't get through, but the, the views from in this castle out to sea is beautiful. So this is the view from down the little private beach, which you can see that way. So this would have been where all the boats and that came. They leave the boats there, walk up to the castle and go in through the middle again based on the pictures obviously it's a little bit bad but for where it is in the location with how the weather is and stuff here as well and the fact that now they've opened it up as well you can actually have a little walk around we were really impressed with it last time we didn't actually get to go inside properly last time um, but to have a little nib around see all the views and stuff it must have been amazing to, I'd love to be sort of back in them days just to see what it was actually like but it's was stinky, proper stinky. Duncan's Head Stacks, I think, next. John O'Groats, uh, Duncan's Head Lighthouse, I think, is right next to it as well. Um, and then all the beaches and stuff across the north. So the weather's nice. It's a bit windy again, so the drone, I don't know how much footage I'm going to be able to get with that again today, which is a bit of a nightmare for the vlogs, but you kind of change the weather, unfortunately. Proper cool coastline, and also one of my favourite views on the North Coast 500. Possibly my favourite view on the North Coast 500 completely, which is Duncan's Be Head Stacks. that leads down to presumably the beach and that's there's a couple of people down there and I don't know if that's like an actual legit thing or whether someone's just attached it but it doesn't look like somewhere that I would necessarily trust to go around myself if you've done that before and you've been down to the beach at Duncan's Behead drop a comment below because I don't think I've seen that before and I don't know whether I would trust it but that might just be me being a bit of a pansy that right there is John O'Groats we've came here just for a stop obviously you cannot really do the NC500 and not do John O'Groats just purely because it's a sign it's like a famous thing it is literally just a sign but there's plenty of stuff to stop and do however I've been thrown into dismay when I went to go to the toilet there. I know I've got one here, but I thought I'd go to one there. 50 pence, that is the most disgusting thing. Charging anyone for a toilet ever is ridiculous. Rather, you paid, you've paid, you have to pay three pound, it says three pound, but I think it's three pound 30 if you pay on the app per vehicle. You can stay all day, but it's three quid. The least they can do is let people use the toilets. Like, obviously, we've got one. I didn't end up paying. I just went in here. But if you haven't got a toilet, you still have to pay to park your car. It's disgusting. It's worth a stop. There's not 
get loads, but it's like it's very touristy, obviously. But if you've never done the NC500 before, you kind of have to come really and do it and get your little photo taken in front of a signpost, which is immaculately white. It's clean as hell. Um, you probably use all the money from the toilet for that. Is anyone else not anyone? who needs to chop up egg into a consistency quite like that. Well yeah, for an egg and mayonnaise sandwich. How else are you going to eat it? Whole eggs. It's like she's feeding a newborn. Like she's feeding a newborn bird. Yeah. What are you doing? Why are you well, doing that's how you that make... Much? Well, that's how you... Just because you swallow your food... I'm going to be able to digest it, Bill. That you're not needy, it'll just come straight back out. Your body doesn't need to do now with that, you've already done it with your knife and fork. That's what you call an egg mayonnaise, or egg and salad cream sandwich. No, you, uh, that hasn't got the structural integrity anymore. You need some structure to it. You might as well have just put it in a blender. Do you, I don't know if you need any more of that in either. Why? Because that is a huge quantity. So. Can also anyone tell us, because we've tried to do a bit of research, <clears throat> and there is none. Um, that we found anyway, but salad cream is obviously a delight. It tastes amazing, so it's obviously got to be horrendous for you. Obviously, we know about like palm oils and all that crap. That's not particularly great for you, but it's a nightmare to buy anything that doesn't have that. But what is it that's in salad cream that's not in mayonnaise? Even if I don't know if they're even remotely the same thing. But why does that taste as good as it does? Can someone just let us know about that in the comments below because it tastes ridiculous. Which means it's obviously horrendous for you. That's the only explanation. It's not this is done at beach and it's pretty cool. You get a lush view of it as you drive in and then the huge sand dunes kind of obscure your view a little bit. I've had some lovely drone footage of this previously, a couple of times actually. Um, Obviously, I've got my little drone in there. I don't know how windy it is, though. There's some massive waves that look like people surfing and stuff. So it'll be cool to go and have a neb. I've got this on. It's red hot, but when it's windy out here, it's proper windy. So I'd rather take a jacket or a fleece to have rather than not have one. The old camera. And let's show you what the first of many beautiful beaches on this coast looks like from up there. Crossing, bit over, a bit overland. Then. It's relatively. Take the run off. I'm gonna have to. It's quite deep that as well. Really? You're never gonna do it. Oh. <laughs> it's a nice beach. It's the start of many along this side. It's a nice long beach, ideal for dogs, that kind of stuff. If you got dogs and you just want a little bit of space to yourself, it's a great one for that. I can't believe how hot it is. There's not even any wind. I don't know where them waves are coming from. But there's barely any wind whatsoever. Did you just say you're warm? I said I'm sweating. That's what you normally say. I'm sweating. That's how hot it is. Even Danny's warm. So Danny reckons this time she can do it. Going the other way where you've got more of a run up. So she, if she does it, <laughs> that's me reason why I think she's done it. It's because she's got a run up. <laughs> That was worst case scenario. Because not only did she almost clear it, she splashed herself. So I'm gonna take a leaf out of not her book and I'm just gonna walk across it and get my feet wet instead. I've got spare shoes. In fact, I'm not even gonna get my shoes wet, I'm just gonna tap them off. So she's done her hip in, splashed her legs, her arse, and somehow her chest, and her face, and she drank some of the water. That didn't go particularly well, did it now? Is it a bit too quiet? 
I don't know. I'm not a the beach is a lush, but like the beach is a beach for me. And there's a lot of uh, all nice up this side. They're lovely, but once you've kind of been to one beach with some, some dunes and some rocks and that, then you've kind of been to them all generally. So they're lovely, and if beaches are your thing, then you're gonna have a whale of a time on the north coast. But for me, Sango Sands is probably my favourite one, which is further along. I don't know if we'll get that done today or not. No, tomorrow. So that'll actually be in the next video, not this one. So you'll have to wait. It's a reason to watch that next one because it'll be early in that video. What are you going to do? Is it wire? Yes, we are doing a zip wire, aren't we? Yeah. Hopefully. So we're here in our park up for the night which we found, it's just a little lay-by, which is pretty. Um, we weren't necessarily gonna stay, we were gonna push on, but then as we drove past, we thought that looks decent, so we turned around and came back. So this is where we are. I'll show you the view shortly, but I'm just busy printing a couple of orders out that we've had that are getting posted tomorrow now. We need to find a uh, post box. And then it's risotto time and Danny's cooking it while I Treat myself. This is the park up for the night. I'll show you where we are. There's four vans in total. Probably enough space, I reckon, for I'll say at least two more if they're decent size. Maybe a few more if they're not. There's a little seating area full of sheep shit and some nice views down that way. We've been so lucky with the weather again to be fair, but one of the best parts is this breeze which might sound strong on video It's not actually that strong, but it's strong enough that it just completely stops the midges from even showing themselves So we've been lucky with that. So Danny's making a risotto. I've sorted the book order out a few drinks and then that's that if you really want to support the channel and have the best road trip of your life, then make sure you pick up a copy of the Ultimate Scottish Road Trip book, whether that's paperback or ebook. If you'd rather a guide that's smaller and more of a quick access companion, then the Instant Guides are probably your perfect option. There are six individual guides covering different parts of Scotland, or you can get all six of them in one bundle pack. 